right, welcome to the Jamie Ross Show. I'm very happy to have a artist who I've had many, many times at the Underground Concert Series, Glenn Velez. Glenn is the founding father of the modern frame drum movement. And um, so we're here to discuss frame drumming, discuss maybe how you got into it and your, you know, your percussion beginnings. Um, and also, he has a new, a new solo CD out called Glenn Velez Solo, and a duo, Breathing Rhythms with Lori Cotler. So let's just start, um, Glenn, you, you were born in Texas. That's right, I was born in uh, Dallas, Texas. Okay, and so in, in, in high school, you studied the kit, the drum kit? Yeah, I have an uncle who's a drummer. Okay. My uncle Larry is a drummer, so he was my introduction to drumming. Uh -huh. He gave me the lessons uh, with the sticks. Okay. And so I did that all through uh, my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't get into the frame drums and the hand drumming until I came to Manhattan to go to music school. Okay. And then uh, after I got out of music school, I wanted to study hand drumming, so I started on South Indian drums. Uh huh. And one of the drums they have is called a kinjira, a very small timbre. Right, and it has a little... Just a little coin. A little coin for in a it. jingle. Right. Mm -hmm. And I started on that and uh, just gradually realized this is a whole category that's not well known in the U.S. Right. Was there any one musician that kind of, you know, got you pointing in this direction? or? Well, it was just that first teacher, a man mm -hmm. named... Ramnad Raghavan, and uh, okay. he recently passed away. Oh. And he was from South India, but he lived in uh, and taught at Wesleyan, mm -hmm. and then he lived for a while in New York City. Okay. So during that period in the late 70s, I studied with him, and that's specifically what got me started with frame drums. Okay. Now, for those who aren't familiar with what a frame drum is, um, is there is there a uh, basic definition of a frame drum. I know tambourines are included. Yes, exactly. But is it is it the, the, the shell, the outer rim yeah. of the head? I have a frame drum right here, so you okay. can demonstrate. It's just a drum that the shell is very thin like this. If you extend this shell out farther, then after a certain point it would stop being a frame drum and would become some other kind of drum, like a barrel drum or a, mm -hmm. uh, a pot drum of various kinds. So. When this shell is very thin, whether it has jingles or not, it's still a frame drum. So it can have disc jingle cymbals, and that makes it like a tambourine. It can be all different sizes, very large like this one, mm -hmm. or it can be very small like a South Indian drum. Okay, and and when you your your music, um, I mean, this is a version of the Irish Bowron. Uh Well, this is particular it? one is more like a. Uh, North African tar drum, okay. but a big, okay. big oversized one. So, so the difference between this and the Bauron is the, the, the stick on the back? Yes. And it's, it's a little, little bit wider? Yeah, it it's a little bit deeper and it has uh, crossbars okay. for uh, putting your hand inside or holding it. Right. Now, traditionally, the Bauron was is used with a stick, but you your, your technique, which you really uh, innovated, is, is using the hands. Exactly. The, the Bauron, 95% of the time in modern uh, Irish uh, playing is done with a stick. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but what I'm doing is applying the South Indian and Arabic Central Asian and the various hand drumming techniques that I know onto the drum. Right. The Bauron is particularly uh, uh, inviting drum for me because of the lower pitch. Mm -hmm. It's a lower pitch drum but because of the uh, head and the size of the head, there's all kinds of sounds that you can get out of it. So it, it becomes a very uh, wide range of melody and rhythmic material that you can do on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and your music, your, your CDs are a blend of many different types of these rhythms? Mm -hmm. Or, or do, do you take one song and you focus on one rhythm, or is it, is it all kind of blended. Yeah, it's because the style that I'm doing has so many different elements to it, it's hard to, for each piece, there's many different uh, um, influences. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to pinpoint them. Uh, 
The main ones, as I said, are South Indian, Arabic, Central Asian, different kinds of Mediterranean music, but the, the uh, interlocking issue is they're all different types of frame drum techniques. Right. And then from that, and from the vocalizations that are important in frame drum uh, styles, mm -hmm. that uh, is the inspiration for all the material that I do. Okay. And um, and the the other one that you use a lot is the Rick. Yes, yeah, this is another one. That. This one is called the Rick. This is a uh, Egyptian, or this particular one is from Lebanon, but these are found all over the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And uh, the characteristics are it looks like our what we would call tambourine because it has these disc jingles, double set of disc jingles, and uh, this particular one is tunable. And it has a head. The material on this head is very thin, so it's very high pitched. Mm -hmm. So right. when you do the low, the lowest sound is a very high pitched sound. Traditionally, these have fish skin, mm -hmm. so they use different kinds of fish because that is very strong and it will take tension at right. a very uh, so keep it very high pitch. Right now, where is this? instrument in Egypt now is is there is it still being used quite yes, a bit? Yes, these are very popular all through the Middle East. Okay. In uh, Iraq, in Egypt, in Syria, all over North Africa, this is one of the main percussion instruments. Uh -huh. And in the uh, universities or the conservatories, they have teachers who specialize in this instrument. Okay. And I've, I've even seen the Glenn Velez Rick used in a lot of like uh, you know mainstream even groups now I see a lot of percussionists pulling out the wreck every now and then yeah but, it's yeah. become more and more popular and this instrument's very uh, versatile because the different positions that you hold it in mean that you can play different dynamic levels mm -hmm. so if you hold it like this you can play very softly right but if you hold it like this you can paint much loud much more loud mm -hmm. and then if you hold it like this a slight shift of the thumb you can uh, move the whole drum and the jingles can be very loud wow and 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 again you learn uh, being in New York you're able to really soak in so many different teachers. Exactly. Being in New York, I was able to study with uh, Lebanese percussion, Lebanese uh, frame drummers on this, and right. then the South Indian drum, the South Italian, and the various styles were it was all done in New York. Right. And and when you were learning all these different styles, did you wonder where you're headed with it? Uh, not at first. Uh -huh. I just was so interested in it. Right. You know, I didn't have a plan or a, uh, a, a, you know, a vision about it. Basically, I just wanted to find out about the individual ones, uh, the Rick and the Bauron and the South Indian drum. Mm -hmm. And then just gradually I started to uh, realize that you could cross over some of the techniques, borrow one technique from one drum and put it on another drum. Right. Ah, uh, it's... It's amazing, and and we're gonna have you performing a little, a little bit later. Um, we're gonna take a break. I just wanted to make sure everyone out there knows that Glenn will be in Maplewood Saturday night, December fifth, to do a show at the Underground at Maplewood Memorial Library, and uh, starts at eight thirty. So do not miss it. We're gonna have another segment in one minute, and. Uh, or not one minute, whenever you press play again. So we'll be right back with Glenn Velez. Thanks a lot. 